It's a Sunday in May, and Ron Dennis, boss of McLaren, is a happy man. A few minutes ago, Ayrton Senna crossed the finishing line in Monaco to bring the McLaren team its 102nd Grand Prix victory. Winning here is an unexpected bonus. Dennis knows that the rest of the season will be a different story. The Williams team, with their more powerful engines, remain favourites for the championship. And though Senna may be celebrating his third victory this year, his contract with McLaren has yet to be signed. And Ron's other driver, American Michael Andretti, has only finished twice in the last six races. So as Ron toasts Ayrton's lead in the championship, he knows all too well the challenge facing his team just to keep in contention. It's in Portugal, four months later, that the season reaches its climax. Since Monaco, there have been no more McLaren victories. Andretti has gone, and Ron arrives knowing that his off-the-record views about Senna have been misquoted in the press. I think uh, Ayrton's a little upset. I've been uh, tweaking his tail a bit in the media, which is not, not normally my style, but uh, it's all, all been done with humour. I don't think he's smiling yet, but I'm ho hopefully he'll be smiling tonight. The Estoril circuit is awash with rumours about Senna's future. Now in third place in the championship, he's frustrated with his engine's performance and faces a challenge from a new teammate. The new boy in car number seven is McLaren's Finnish test driver, Mika Hakkinen. He has replaced Michael Andretti. This will be Mika's first Grand Prix for McLaren. For the next three days, Ron Dennis will be in the thick of the action. He's pleased with what the team have developed since the last Grand Prix. The car's performance has been significantly improved. Usually, Ron concentrates on Senna's car with Ayrton's race engineer, Italian Giorgio Ascanelli. This weekend, other members of the team get his attention too, especially Hakkinen's engineer, Steve Hallam. Mika is putting his experience as a test driver to good use. Yeah, so that, yeah, so you set the guys together. Okay. One thing, knowing, people knowing about that we put a new system on the car, and it's one thing I'm knowing about a braking system. There will be a lot of people looking for the understanding, so we must just close off any dialogue on it. So far in this Friday practice, Mika is doing well. Eight total six times, Mika. Eight total six times. And after this, this tire is going to come off, yeah? That's correct. Right, go. Racing driver, not highway patrol. It's been a long time since Ayrton Senna faced competition from his teammate. It's put him on his metal. You could put on your box one. Your box one. The seven and a half left man. Seven and a half left man. Ron is proud of the team's technology and the competitive edge it gives the cars. To us, it looks like a series of, you know, of irrelevant data lines. But based on these numbers here, we know exactly where it's taken, where it is on the circuit. It will then go into, the, into this car system, and it will program the car to be one millimeter lower. That, the moment the car gets to that reference point, the front goes down a millimetre and we actually program each corner four times so the car change, changes its suspension characteristics four times in every corner. And so I would be looking to increase this first run by maybe one or two laps to get a good feel for the car so that we get a solid change another run followed by the final run of new tyres. Okay. I think that's what we'll have to do. 
if you're going to do that, I'll put another lap on here. Another lap on that one. But it's only my suggestion. You do what you want. Well, I like to think that I have something to contribute. Uh, obviously, um, having started motor racing in 1966, I've got quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of experience to bear. Uh, but um, to be honest, um, it would probably function pretty well without me. When I'm talking to the, to, to the mechanics or to uh, David, the team manager, it's really to reassure myself that. They're, that they're thinking the way I'm thinking. I'll all everyone together and get them in the garage and take this. There's a, a little uncertainty, or if they feel indecisive about uh, an issue, that I can add my opinion and hopefully contribute to the decision being taken correctly. Like now. And no loss of power at any revs. Oh, there. That, that, that noise is a funny noise. Ayrton is positive there's something wrong with his engine, but the engineers are not so sure. If we believe him, which I'm sure we do, mm. we've got no alternative than to change it. I don't think we should waste time on anything else. I think we've got to change it. He's, he's adamant, I mean, uh, that, that it's got the noise. The engine runs all right, all the valves are there, and. But I can't see any alternative to changing it. If he's adamant as a noise, I don't think he would say the noise. You know. Do you believe then? Would you leave it in? I'm asking you. No, I'm asking you. What would you do? The problem is not that. The problem is the engine's going in. Do they change what appears to be a perfectly good engine simply because of a driver's hunch? No, we don't need that. We just change it. Okay, this is the best engine. He's got a, you know, the other three engines are down. And give him the option. Do you want Team manager Dave Ryan decides to take the risk. When the old engine is stripped down, they find a defective camshaft. Ayrton was right. At the end of the first morning practice, Mika has done astonishingly well. He's almost as fast as Senna. I may do, yes. But I'll let you know. Meanwhile, Ron has a date with Finland's press, who want to know what he thinks of his new driver. And what's the problem in the high speed is to understand. First on the back end, it goes like this in a high speed and pushing the front. Right. And it makes the car very unstable. You can't really be hard on the power because if you try to go on hard on the power, you're gonna spun. And if you try to you have to back off all the time to be under the limit. And, uh, well, it's a shame. Uh, I mean, he's got two disadvantages. One is that he's uh, too good looking. Another big disadvantage, especially around me, is he's got too much hair. Uh, the fact remains that um, you know, he's, uh, he's very professional. He's, uh, of course, there's a bit of immaturity there, um, but that's because he's young. I find it, anyway, extremely refreshing. You know, there's a little bit of uh, naivety there, but I, I, it's uh, it's it, it's. It's a good, it's a good value. It's not a bad one. You know, it's, yeah. it's nice to see sort of, you know, the a degree of innocence. This is this, I can just imagine the headline now in Finland. You know, Ron Dennis says, Mika Hakkinen is immature and naive. And naive. <laughs> <laughs> Time for the first qualifying session. Mika rehearses the drive ahead. It's a good session for McLaren. Senna is third quickest, and Mika only two hundredths of a second behind him. Your split time, you, you were much quicker than Mika. Up until the last corner, you lost a huge amount of time. Second run? Traffic. Otherwise, it was good. 
balance was basically the same what it was in the first one. Otherwise, it was good. You can't say anything else, but good in the class two days. Tell me something. Good. He likes it. Good. Do you know that play because seconds. he likes it? Yeah, let me tell you. <laughs> good does not make the car go quicker. <laughs> no. Yeah, but carry on saying that because no, no. he needs it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you can get the best engine for tomorrow. <laughs> Mika has driven well, but Ron is not a man to let him rest on his laurels. Oh. You uh, go and get on with your job. What are you going to do now? Well, you're going to go and do it. It's called technical debrief. I know that you probably haven't been to one of these before. It means you've got to work still. Sure. Look at all the data and try and make the car go quicker. What do you think? In general, I'm very happy about this. Not if you stop for this last run. Yeah, but yeah, put it behind you. Huh? Put it behind you. If you know you can do it, you can sure, do it. Sure, I know I can do it, but it's just the traffic. Same but for everybody. Same for everybody. I know that. You should be completely satisfied with your first day. And I'm, I can assure you the whole team is. So they're professional. They know. They saw the split times and everything. So it doesn't matter. But uh, get out the rovers and get to work. Make it quicker. Yeah, I'm going to go. To make it quicker. Yeah. Good. After practice comes a piece of news that stuns the paddock and has profound implications for the McLaren team. Alain Prost, who seems set to clinch his fourth world championship this weekend, announces his intention to retire at the end of the season. Vous en doutez un petit peu depuis quelques minutes. Cette petite conférence de presse est donc destiné à vous annoncer que je ne courrai plus en Formule 1 après le Grand Prix d'Adélaïde. Now there'll be a vacancy at Williams, and it's no secret that Senna wants to fill it. So has Ayrton actually made a statement? Ayrton hasn't made an official statement, but he has said to me personally that he is because I heard it all over the place and I just collared him. I said, Ayrton, you please tell me what you've said. He said yes. I won't be driving for you. I have decided to leave the team at the end of the season. It is a decision that I've had matured within me for a while. And uh, I've known for some time that I had to change team. Later that day, Senna, in an uncomfortable meeting with Ron, tells him of his intention to leave McLaren at the end of the season. I'm quite used to going to work in the dark. In fact, probably you're more you're more used to the dark than you are going to work, I suppose, really. Yeah. Uh, it's quite um, quite a busy weekend, really. I mean, you're seeing um, seeing Pross retirement, which uh, really I was aware of two or three weeks ago. So uh, it's certainly news to the world, but it's not news to me. You're seeing the uh, that'll probably trigger off uh, Ayrton moving to Williams. I'm, I'm happy for Ayrton. He, I think maybe uh, for both of us it's time for change and uh, I, I only think of the good times we shared and uh, I'm sure that he's going to win races in, uh, in Williams and I, I just hope that uh, it's not too many and uh, that Mika's performance yesterday continues through and uh, sees him offer a threat. You can check me if you want. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Still want my card. Nice one. Yeah, in if <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be trouble, I tell you. This one's going to be trouble. Ron and Senna patch up yesterday's row. Let's try and do it. Let's be careful for both of us. Okay, we put, put behind us. What happened? Good. Even without you saying anything, that was my my goal anyway. Yeah, okay. You know, but even without talking to you, if we didn't talk at all, I wouldn't change. I was going to go exactly as I, I as I as I always try. You know? mm -hmm. There is no there is no other way of doing for me. Ah. Right? No, there isn't for me. Whatever the drivers promise, they know the problem is power. 
as Ron reminds the men from his engine suppliers, Cosworth. I can look at putting that sort of deal together. And if you, and if you can't, then you've got to sit and talk, you know, in a, you know, in a way that you know, allows both sides to feel comfortable that they've got the basis of a future. I want to win. If you make an engine that I can win with, then I'll use it. It's one o'clock and the final qualifying session. Mika is keen to improve on yesterday's time. Mika has done remarkably well. He's third fastest so far. You've got 15 minutes before you must get in the car. So, tell me. What's the situation? I'm still third? You're yeah, still third. Ayrton hasn't gone yet. Uh, how's it feel on the springs? Any different? Or, uh... Fun. Pressure's all right. Tires, yeah. I screwed up the, the last one. I went fast, medium fast, fast. I slowed down and fast. I went. Uh, lost the pressure. I lost the first corner completely. Right. I'm gonna go in the truck. Okay. Go where it's quiet. I want to see what Archer does, and then I want to go in the truck just to get the feeling. There are a few minutes left before the end of qualifying. It's Ayrton's last chance to beat Mika's time. Qualifying's over, and to the team's surprise, the new boy has beaten the veteran by a fraction of a second. Mika will be third on the grid, and Ayrton fourth. But in generally, to be third in a qualifying in a, in a Formula One first time in my life, it feels exciting. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking forward to it tomorrow. For Ron, it's been the best Saturday this season. For a while, he can relax. Hello. Hello, oh boy. Hi, Charlie Rascal. Ah, what are you doing? Playing? Can I speak to Big Boy? Oh, hello, Big Boy. What are you doing? You're playing too. Golly gosh, sounds like a lot of playing going on there. Are you going to watch the racing cars? You're not? Oh, you are. Oh, not yet. Okay. Love you. Bye. Sunday. Race day. The cars are set up and ready to race. Now it's down to the drivers. The Finn, who's racing for the first time for the team, and the Brazilian whose six years with McLaren are almost over. I feel really good. I feel relaxed. And I know what I'm going to do. What are you going to do? Well, if you want to understand so, I'm planning to uh, 
take a lead in the first corner and uh, try to keep the others behind me so long time what I can but because lack of power it's very hard to do that on the straights and uh, it's gonna be difficult but we are good on the corners and we have to wait and see what about the traffic jam at the uh, first corner it's not going to be a problem. I mean, if, if I'm going to get the lead immediately, it's no traffic if you're leading. Thanks. than there is success uh, in, it, in, the, in the sport so uh, really you just know that one way or the other you're going to have some sort of emotion at the end uh, most of the time it's negative unfortunately <laughs> Ron takes his place on the pit lane wall, where he'll spend the race. Do you think Mika jumped the start? No, I don't think so. It's creeping. I hope they don't. Deciding race tactics with Ron are Dave Ryan and the two engineers. I thought he could overtake on this place. No way. They are quicker than us on this place. Be clever. Stop. We want to stop early, not late, huh? Told you. Spin. Look. He's running. A second. Say a second. How many laps before this gap is big enough to get in and out? Do you understand? So we get out in front of Burger. How much do you think we need? At least 16 laps. On the 20th lap, before Ayrton's scheduled tyre change, his engine blows up. Attention is now on Mika, stuck behind the Ferrari. A well-timed tyre change could put him ahead. When are you going to stop? We're thinking about it in the next lap or so. You're going to call him, Steve. Okay, I'm going to go for it. Bring in Schumacher in as well. Ferrari's coming in as well. Stop, we've got to say stop, stop, stop. The tactic doesn't work because the Ferrari came in at the same time. Mika is still behind it. We should have let it, as soon as we realised the Ferrari was coming in, we should have let him run. I don't think we should stop twice. 
think it's better well, let's just pan it out. How did the wear look do? Just a little bit harder than prediction, but we should be able to make it on this set if we want to. For 10 laps, Mika tries to get past. Then on lap 32, he tries too hard. Weekend when Prost clinched the championship and McLaren's star driver is on the move. Ron Dennis remains determinedly philosophical about not winning the race. Well, it's not the first. It's not going to be the last. I think you've just got to look for the uh, good points in the weekend. I mean, I think I did a good job. Made a mistake, but, you know. Just getting a bit frustrated, sat behind the Ferrari. Um, you know, you just got to put, put it behind you and look forward. It's, uh, the Monday mornings that hurt when you when you wake up and you you know you think another one we could have won. You know this is a would have been a a race we could have won. But, uh, that's motor racing. <laughs> 